Hi there, welcome to getting started in Out of All. This video is meant to be a basic tutorial for entirely new players without experience in the game Out of All. It will just briefly cover most of the things you will encounter in the game to give some orientation, but there will be no time for in-depth explanations, because we want to keep this video to roughly half an hour. Out of All is a sandbox mining game that released um, on November 2022, saw some major improvements over the past couple of weeks and is currently available on Steam for around 15 euros in version 0.9. And because all of the improvements, um, this is probably a good time for such a video because more and more players will discover the game and probably need some help to get started. If you start up the game, you will land here on the main screen. Compared to me, you won't have any of those save games. So probably the first thing you want to do is create a new game. How you do it, you click in here give it a nice name. We will just use the name of the video and then we hit create new game. You will see then that the game is created down here. You have the option to start the game which will immediately launch you into the world and start the in-game tutorial. We won't do that at the moment because I want to go over the other tabs down here first um, and you can delete the game you have here, the save game, by hitting the trash bin. Down here you have four tabs. Last one is pretty easy to understand. You leave the game. This one will put you to the, uh, will lead you to the in-game help. As you can see here, this covers the default controls and different aspects of the game where if you hit one of those, you will find a short explanation. We won't have time to go through all of these. But it's important to know if you go into the in-game help and you have a question, you probably get it answered here if you're running into troubles. Whenever you find such a sign, this means you can leave there. Then the third one here is the controls, which is where you can bind and customize your control input. It's a pretty complex key binding system uh, already uh, because um, out of all allows highly customized inputs. So again, we won't be able to go through all of this, but you should know where you find the controls and where if you want to change anything, you have to go. So then we move further up and come to the general game settings. The most important aspect for game settings is nothing is put into stone. So if you set these settings in a certain way and you start a game, you can always change them in your game. So you don't have to start a new game. For instance, if you started a game without weather and without day, a night cycle, but you then want to switch over to day, night and or weather, you just activate them in the settings, save the settings and your game will then follow on. The, probably we, we, we should do a very brief explanation what does what. Steering, um, you select the mode for your steering, outer centering will just Auto center your steering while standard will leave the vehicle in whatever direction you put it in. Weather, day and night, easy to understand. You activate both or deactivate both. Time lapse interval is for the in game recording um, system and gives the interval in which pictures will be saved. I have set it to four, which would mean if I hit the time lapse button the game would save one picture every four seconds. Then we have automatic forward rear road. This is for your driving. I have it active. If you have it inactive, you have to manually switch. ITS or independent track steering is a steering method, control method you can use on the excavators. I use it so I have it active. Then below that, 
comes a very important section because you can choose per vehicle type how the dirt in the game behaves out of or basically has two types of dirt behavior the one um, that is on by default at least uh, on my game here because I have everything off is the voxel system where you create boulders that will then be in your bucket in your loader in your dumper and that you can carry around and the other mode is the bulk dirt mode which is kind of similar to what you might have seen in other games like gold rush construction simulator or different types of farming simulator mods where more or less uh, you, you have a fixed bulk of dirt in the bucket in the loader that is not in loose uh, voxels loose um, boulders like the other mode that's something you can just turn on and off again all these settings also are not set per game file but can be changed on the fly if you like so you can just experiment with those then we come to the HUD and graphic settings I think they do not really need explanation one thing you should uh, be aware of field of view is both for third and first person because the game, cu game currently does not make a difference between both and finally you have master sound and that's it in the settings not much overall and with that set in advance we are now ready to go into the game and what we will do is I will just quickly move through the in-game tutorial it's very short and after that after we have finished the in-game tutorial I will go through different elements of the UI the different windows and the things you will find in the vehicles and in your main base so that you know where you need to go if you are looking for something specific okay we start up the game and it loads into the world controls are pretty standard um, as you probably have seen on the help screen using the mouse will pan the camera around WASD will move the character and now we will start to do the in-game tutorial it asks me first to open the help screen you can always open this by hitting F1 and then it wants me to get a loan so I can buy some stuff so I will move inside here get over there get one of the loans here doesn't really matter which one at the moment go over to the vehicle store buy a loader as per request move out and you in the top right you see the uh, the mission tracking we will enter the vehicle by hitting E I already mapped all my controls to a gamepad, so I will use that one. We pass the selling point. The game wants us to dig some ore. For that I will hit the wall here and you can see I using the boulder voxel dirt and that's why it creates these little boulders over there we move that to the selling point unload there We sold the all and the in-game tutorial is done. Let's park the loader over here, leave the vehicle and now that we have done the tutorial we can start to explore the game a little deeper and go through the different elements ex and explain them. So we're gonna start the explanation with the 
UI elements if you're in uh, with your little mining man over here in the top left corner of the screen you will have behind where you will find the help or certain pop art messages currently we only have the hind for the help menu so hitting F1 again we are here and in the top right corner we have our in-game balance the in-game date and the mission tracking and if we hover over something we can interact with like this we will get a short note in the bottom center screen so important keys to know for the character or, or everywhere is Q will you will be able to interact uh, with shops using Q and Q will also open the inventory I've now done it and uh, when you're in the inventory of your mining man over there you will always have your inventory with 20 slots you will have a trash bin where if you drag something from the inventory to this or from a vehicle to this it will be destroyed or if you have building material you can drag that over here and then you can start building with that material you also have four five buttons over here the top one is rescue back to camp we can click that one and it will always rescue us to this point on top of our main base so if you get stuck somewhere cannot jump out of it you can hit rescue and will land there then you will have here the mission tracking and you can see here this mission this task is marked yellow this is marked yellow if I hit that one the deliver material task will not no longer be highlighted and if I leave this in the top right corner you will also see that the mission tracking is deactivated one important thing to know at the moment is you cannot cancel missions you can only put them in a certain order and that is done by hitting the select mission button select mission will always put the mission you select on top like this and if you fulfill this mission the next in line will be automatically set at the top so if I only want to have deliver task missions at the top I can go through all of these like this move them to the top of the list and then the game will start to work down this list very easy to understand um, and currently not much to do there the second button is if you have day night cycle on and or just need a rest you can hit that one and it will I guess uh, move to the next day at 7 a.m. this button very important for building uh, or more important for destroying if you click that and it is green then you have the deli uh, demolition mo mode on demolition mode will allow you to remove things you build but one little drawback there if this one is on and you are in a vehicle like a loader an excavator or anything and you move over things these things will get destroyed so Remember to deactivate this one if you don't want to mess up your nice build-ups. This one over here will put you to the screenshot and time-lapse um, mode. So we click on this one. Now you see my character is gone and I can move the camera using WASD. Shift will speed up the movement. Right click. Uh, r right mouse button holding will allow me to turn around the camera and you see there and there is my base and because I'm using an ultra wide screen this is a little bit stretched because I think the game records the time lapse and the screenshots in uh, 16 by 9 and not the 21 by 9 I have currently but not so important and you leave this mode here and you are back to the inventory um, over here you have also a couple of tabs this one is your mission uh, select table this one is your balance tab where you can see how your balance is going you saw here I took the loan I bought the loader 
I sold some war and I got some mission rewards. So there you can just see your balance and over here you have the different kind of vehicles and you can select them and whenever on a vehicle you have three options you can select you can hit drive this will teleport you to any vehicle into the driving seat and you see I'm now back in the loader and can start to move it around if I like let's just leave it for the moment go back to the inventory the second one is rescue click rescue Similar to rescue for yourself, this rescue button for vehicles will rescue the vehicles to the helipad where they are delivered. Important here, there is thing I think currently a little glitch in the game where if you have customized the vehicle, um, it is reset to the default colors and default equipment if you rescue it. So just know it when you do it and your your red loader turns into a yellow one while that is and the third option for vehicles is the selling options and here we already have an important par uh, part of the game that you might want to really know and that is you will always sell anything for the price you purchased so you see i bought this one for 501k um, dollar and if I sell it it will sell for the exact same amount of money so I never lose money if I buy and r if I buy sell rebuy equipment and so on this is very important to know um, for your balance and if we hit sell you see I'm back to over three million my starting balance after I took the loan um, with that being covered and uh, we are being outside. N next important point is how you actually find material to mine probably and the easiest way is indeed to look at the ground and see over here where I'm now standing there is a light green color and here is a darker green color and darker green means below that below the surface there is material that is not dirt and that can be mined and here you see where the dirt already is removed that there is coal. Um, we can also take a further look to make it more clear for that we go into the screeny mode, the time-lapse mode and we move over here and look down like this and then you probably already see it. You see the landscape and everywhere you see those those uh, down there you see those darker spots over there you see a base a radio tower and also the darker spot and that's in the world where you find deposits so moving to the dark spots what material is there is indicated by the color like this from from the color texture of this material I know even without uh, using the drill um, I know this is coal and if we move over here to this other vein that is right next to our base here I see some light grayish color which is lithium a very um, valuable ore and rock the darker one and over here we see the difference between normal dirt which is brown and this kind of light pink color dirt is uh, pay dirt which you can put into a sorter and which that will then be divided into dirt and ore. So now we covered where you find ore so probably it's good to take a look at what our base offers us. Our base over here has a selling point. You can drop material just into this and then get the value of the load. It is also needed for uh, material that is delivered into the cell point will also count towards deliver tasks. Um, that's basically it. You move up here. You can build a plant if you like that directly puts in there. It's all up to you. 
on the side of the base you have a fueling station so if your vehicles run out of fuel you place them right next to this one and fill them up we will I will demonstrate that quickly with a vehicle um, but you can also fill up a fuel tank a fuel truck and with a fuel truck you can drive out to vehicles that need refueling and refuel them there and if we move into the base probably a key you should know is hitting C will switch between third and first person so hitting C I move into first person and enter our main base and here we have four places we have the banking um, table banking account where I got the loan and over here you see that's the tab where I can take a loan and that's the tab where I can pay off the loan if I hit payback then we have the control room this shows you what you have produced and it has an overview of the different materials and the value they have not so much the vehicle store has the vehicles same um, tabs on top here the different cat uh, categories of vehicles excavators loaders equipment doses and a grader down here and the trucks rock trucks a dump truck and a fuel truck uh, what is important here maybe that's an information you like to know the number that is set here was, is roughly the weight of the vehicle so an EX 500 is a 50 ton excavator an EX 300 is a 30 ton excavator same with the loaders 300 is a 30 ton 200 is a 20 ton dozers 50 ton 80 tons loaders capacity 20 30 40 tons uh, not sure if that is correct <laughs> and I cannot tell you the exact amount of fuel that is in the sandwich but that's the general idea and the th second thing to note is when you buy equipment you see an extension over here which reads EXB or EXM or EXS and that is important if you buy an excavator and it has uh, the attachment point up on the front to use an equipment on this one you have to buy equipment with the EXS extension for demonstration purposes I will buy the little ah, the big one and that one so I have an EXP excavator board and I will buy an EXB teeth bucket so they fit together and before we move outside you heard probably the helicopter that drops the vehicles we will take a look at the general store here we can buy in the first tab um, tr different track pads let's buy this one and we can buy different tires track pads will go onto the dozer or the excavator tires on all trucks the grader er, and uh, the loader on the light tab we can buy uh, lights and a GPS receiver and some beacons to individualize our vehicles in this tab we can buy colors and we can buy spare parts the spare parts it is these four items will be used up on the vehicle and then they will be destroyed or damaged and then you can exchange them currently this has no impact on the performance of the machine as far as I know and finally we have this tab where we can buy uh, building materials I just, let's buy this one and this one this one you can buy a detonator different types of explosives and you can buy different types of conveyor belts a jaw crusher a cone crusher a sorting drum and hoppers to build your own plants we are not going to go into building that's everything on its own i will just demonstrate the very rough thing how you build things um, outside quickly but that would cover an entirely uh, 
uh, a separate video on its own because it it it's a little bit complicated and you need to get used to this one. So we have more colors, lights, things to individualize the vehicle and now we can probably go outside. Uh, also buy another one so you just see the helicopter move away. So quickly the loader is the, the dump truck is dumped and there you see the helicopter is already uh, running away. So here you see truck the tease bucket and our excavator. Now if we enter that one and we hit Q I will shut down the engine here and then go through the taps. These taps will be more or less similar on all vehicles. Um, you have the inventory on the left, you have an overview of the vehicle here with the running hours, RPM, uh, fuel capacity, uh, fuel usage per hour. You have this menu where if you are close enough you can attach things. You have this where you can switch out the lights important thing here to know t is currently if you turn the lights on and then switch out parts of them the lights you switch out will be off and so you m must take a little care to not always have lights on and how does it look like i will get to the outside here a little bit and you can probably see there there are lights on top of the cabin they are this row and if I remove these and attach these. You see I now have some LED bars and if I activate the lights I have a lot more light now than before. To see where is what attachment points I can just say move them and look where they appear like this one and it you should get an idea play around with it not too difficult. Then here we have the tab where you see the spare parts, the color and the track pads. So let's first switch out the track pad. We remove this one and put in this one and you see the tracks now are wider because I changed an L patch for an XL patch. Um, all tracks will go on all uh, vehicles so even a DX track pad will go onto an excavator and an EX track pad will go onto a dozer. It is just these have I think two little extensions and the dozer has just one. Colors is very similar. You remove the paint and you add paint in the slot and the color will change. Um, on the excavator the third slot currently does not change anything. The third slot is, I think, let's just move over to the truck here. The third slot is rims, as you can see. Now, yellow colored rims. Let's get back to the excavator. So, that is this. You can also activate, deactivate the parking brake. You can shut down the engine this has no function and this is where you can refuel um, but I have mapped the parking brake to something else so I can use this from outside what we can try out is if we put a GPS receiver on like this and we start up the engine we get a GPS uh, window on the right side of the screen if you click it when you are in the inventory and you click it here on the zero the GPS will level with your current ground and if you then move around and your vehicle starts to tilt to one side you see the GPS also tilts well, I've now put it on an excavator but it's more useful on a dozer so it's just so you know how to install it and zero it. Now we will move over and actually attach something to our excavator. So you know how you use equipment. There is our teeth bucket. 
I move up there and then you bring your clutch close to the bucket and you see in the top left corner you will see a pop-up saying now you can attach it you go in your inventory click the symbol and attach the bucket and now the bucket is attached and we can use it so now let's see you move over to the fueling point so you know how to refuel And now you see over there, this is now highlighted white. And you see we currently have roughly 250 liters and if I click that one, it will fill up the fuel. So, really easy to use. Uh, final thing we will take a look at on the vehicles, um, because this might end up in some confusion when you're messing things around is in regard to the controls I'm just shutting down the engine if you take a look in the UI of the vehicle you will see up and entering the vehicle in the bottom right corner you will have an indicator in which gear you are currently in because and I'm in R1 don't know why if I start this up and start to move forward you see it switches the gear I can lock the gear using the gear lock. To unlock I have to reverse the direction. So if I go forward, hit the gear lock, then it will be stuck to gear 1. If I then move reverse, the lock will be disengaged and if I then move forward again, I can move further beyond gear number 1. Same in reverse. If I go reverse, hit the lock, it will be locked to reverse 1. If I then click forward and go back again, we will go into higher gears. And the other symbol in the bottom right corner is a little excavator where either the superstructure and undercarriage is highlighted or the main boom and boom extension and bucket. And these are two vehicle modes. This one currently highlighted is the driving mode and this one is the building mode. And what this does allow you, just very briefly, is to map two different kind of control set to one of these modes. And to show you where you will assign this, we have to take a look into the controls and we will take the excavator for that because that's the one I set up pretty much. And here you will find these two modes. Usually none of those is highlighted green. And if you highlight like here, you see this one both are white and this means if I have keys assigned to that function, they will function in both modes. The moment I highlight one of these modes, like here where I have um, highlighted the construction mode, same down here for the ITS. This means these controls will only work in the construction mode. And so I can assign two control sets to a vehicle. Let's just take a look if I can demonstrate this very quickly with a with the excavator. Yeah, I can, because you see here, I have uh, mapped forward, reverse and left, right to the driving mode on an axis um, and on keys and, I, and have mapped the ITS, the individual steering, to the construction mode. So, if I go back and hop back into our excavator over here, and you take a look down there. Now I'm in the construction mode and in the construction mode the keys for the ITS work and also all my keys and access I have assigned to the functions of the excavator like main boom, extension boom, bucket and superstructure turning. If I now switch over to driving mode I can Hopefully, ah, it does not work, as I currently see. <laughs> um, 
when ITS is activated, uh, the normal driving does not work on the excavator. But I can also not move my superstructure around because these controls are no longer active in the driving mode. And so if you're sitting in a vehicle and suddenly a function that you expect to work does not work, check out if you may have changed between construction and driving mode and then simply switch back like now I do it and again the excavator is doing. So now I think the video is already long enough um, but hopefully I have covered more or less all the important basics that are there. Okay, so when editing the video I found that I have forgotten two aspects I think that should be in a getting started video for out of all. Even so the video then will be uh, roughly 40 to 45 minutes instead of the half hour anticipated. Do you see how complex the game is? And the first aspect is actually building stuff. Um, we have bought some things from th from the shop and as I said if you drag them over here you will switch to building mode. And then you see over there there is our steel block and by moving the mouse around I can place this somewhere and it's kind of clunky at the moment and you can see the position when in first person is a little different. So at the moment let's just place it there by l clicking left mouse button. The next element I can using the number one and the number three on the numpad rotate them and if I get close to something I already built you see it will snap and it will snap to different positions. This is kind of messy so you have to be patient and try out a few things. So like this I can now build a little tower like that and you see depending on where I move the things I can also rotate them once they have snapped. I can build that structure. Oops. And that's the point here. You can now demonstrate how the demolition tool works. I activate it, point that little mouse pointer in the center of the screen over it, hit the mouse button. Oh, no. Remove that from the building slot and now it works. And you see the elements you destroyed are not destroyed. They are placed back in your inventory. And I can also snatch, uh, s snatch, snap things below other items, so like this. But you see, I have to do some funny movements to actually get things placed where I want them to have. So building is a little difficult. Um, my advice would be if you plan on building a bigger structure, build a nice base. You can, for instance, use like the concrete floor uh, floors. as a base guideline where to place objects because other things will snap to them. You know, now I've those concrete walls snaps to the base plate, to the base floor and I can rotate them and that way build a nice square building or I'll remove some of these Sometimes the, the blocks are split, f no one really knows why, so don't wonder. And also these steel blocks will snap to a floor tile or a wall tile. And that way you can build a blueprint or a supporting structure and build your project into this. And when it's finished, like, say, I just want to have these two blocks on top of each other, but don't want to have the rest. I can just then go there, be a little careful and remove my base plates, everything you see back in the inventory and the structure that I want to remain 
stays where it should be. So this is a very very quick way in how building works and how you can r um, create some uh, structures for your own fun. And the final thing I want to take a look is is how safe games work. Because the game does not have autosave and so what you have to do if you want to save you have to go there and either click save yes so this will overwrite your current game and will update it to the state you are currently in but let's say you i want to keep this one and create a new one and it's this is a little bit more tricky then i have to go here first type in a name for the new save game, like getting started number two, create the new game, but now it is not saved yet. I have to click save as, and only then this game over here is actually the state I want to save. If you don't do that and only create it, leave your game and then start up the renamed or newly created game you will end up in front of the tutorial because this is actually at first a new game and it is not a new safe game so keep that in mind and with that being said i i think the video is really really long enough now and so if you have any questions put them in the comments below i try to answer them to my best knowledge if there are certain things I should put into a separate video, I'm always happy to take suggestions. And lastly to say, hope you enjoyed the video, hope is, uh, it was helpful to your journey into Out of Awe. So happy gaming, happy mining, have fun and see you guys out there. Bye bye!